Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner. Here is Mark Wade. How are you, mate? I'm good today, sir. Now, now you are here with the many things that you're involved with at this moment in time that we that I'm equally excited about that we could be talking about. But this is uh, this is the omnibus collection, or one of my favourite things you've ever done at DC, the Flash. Um, Thank you. What can what can you tell me about it, mate? I am I'm thrilled beyond belief. It's it's funny. You, when we're doing this stuff in 1992, where we, when I started Flash with Ryan Augustine, uh, you know, you, you, there was never any conception that this material would ever be collected in any way. We were still in the phase of comics where it was still a disposable medium and people would read it in one month. And then, you know, if they had it in their collections, they might visit it again in a few years. But if not, those stories were forgotten. And I, you know, I, I look back on it. I, I don't know that I would have done anything different if I'd known it was going to be collected in, in these beautiful big hardcovers. But uh, I'm pleased that the material, which is 30 years old at this point, apparently still holds up for a lot of people. And that's not something you can say about a lot of 30 year old art. Yeah, no, it, it, that is very true. I think really the power of what you, you guys achieved um, I, I, I can't remember, and you're, you're, you're going to tell me, I, I can't remember it was you who created the concept of the Speed Force, but yeah. if it, it was, right? And, and that has become so integral to the mythos of the Flash. That must yeah. be so satisfying to have seen. I, I mean, clearly there's no Flash TV show without what you created, exactly. right? And it exactly. leans so heavily on your era. I, 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 and also a concept that you and I have talked about before, which is your affinity for superhero dynasties yeah mm -hmm. so you've got yeah. these superhero dynasties you have the speed force there is it's so rich with all of that that particular mm -hmm. run there's you a know. lot of yeah there's a lot of stuff there that has in you know in the last in the few in the years ensuing has seeded a lot of the tv stuff the movie stuff i will say that the moment that i heard the word speed force on the flash tv show for the first time i just i lit up like broadway i was so it's, there's something very exciting to me about being able to add something back to the mythos of Superman or Flash or any of these characters from whom I've drawn so much. The idea that I'm able to then give something back that has legs is, is just very, very satisfying. Yeah, I, 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 it really must be. And um, I remember as a fan, this is just going to turn into one long fan appreciation conversation, I'm afraid. I, we can do that anytime. <laughs> well, I, I, rem I mean, I just became so compulsively addicted to, because I, I, I'd liked what Baron had done on those first uh, 17 issues or so, you know, yeah. and the, yeah. the stuff that he'd, he'd talked about, like the fussy's food consumption, all that kind of stuff that I really yeah. enjoyed. But I've, I really found myself just getting completely addicted to the book in your ear. And I think it's, I would analogize it with um, a completely different run by a different creator, the detective comics run um, by uh, Norm Brayfogle and Alan Grant. Yeah. Yeah. It just added so much to the Batman mythos, kind of almost under the radar when it came yeah. out. And that's what I thought you were doing with the flash. And every, every oh, man, why hasn't anybody done this before? And the thing <laughs> that really my head blew off with was the issue where you had um where you had Wally West say Johnny Quick's formula. Yeah. Thank you. I've been I, I that love back. that I love that issue. It's amazing. I had that in my back pocket for a long time. Actually, I went back recently and found that I had written a spec script for Brian Augustine before I began my run, which was a lot of that was in that spec script and I cribbed a lot of it for this story, but it, the basic high concept of what happens when Wally says the Johnny Quick Speed formula and goes into hyperdrive, it was something I'd, I'd hold, I, that's a bullet I had in the chamber for a long time. Oh, that that's so that's lovely to hear actually mate because yeah. I, I, uh, I i my response to reading that was gleeful and i would bet any other old time flash fan it was like yeah man why hasn't anybody done this before it was one of those real moments but also the fact that you know instrumental is is one of your greatest characters on, on instrumental in that narrative is one of your greatest flash characters who's uh, max mercury of course and um, where did you, had, had, had he been, Quicksilver, that character, had he been somebody that you'd wanted to play with for a long time? There's just, I, I'd only read one Quicksilver story in my entire life. That was the original name of the character back in the Golden Age. I mean, DC had it before there was a Marvel Quicksilver. Um, yeah, well, ex flat. well explained, mate. Uh, yeah, Thank that's, you. That's worth pointing out to uh, anybody so other than uh, um, yeah, right. a man of a so certain age. Was, 
Yeah. Right. So Quicksilver was a Golden Age character. He appeared in one reprint and one Flash Giant. And I read okay. that when I was yeah. 10 years old. Yeah. And there's nothing special about the character. He he has no civilian name. He has no civilian job. He just shows up in this costume. It's the only time in the and he's an acrobat in, in, with some super speed abilities. Um, but there's something about that costume. I loved that costume. And so when Brian and I were talking about what else can we draw from DC history or DC mythos to put in the flash that came up because it always had an attachment to that character. Clearly we couldn't call him Quicksilver. So we had to come up with a different name and I have no earthly idea. I want to say that Max Mercury came out of my mouth rather than Brian's, but frankly, as collaborative as, as we were at that point, we could have been either of us. Right. How interesting. So, so it, and it, I get the sense that your ambitions for that character kind of organically increased as you went along because it, right. he's almost like such a Swiss, Swiss army knife of a character in the book. There's so many yeah. things, ways in which you use him. Right. There were no, I mean, you know, bringing him in, he was basically just supposed to be one supporting character in one storyline and the, and the thing that set him apart as we kept saying, was he is the Zen master of speed. He's been yeah. doing this for so much longer than any of the other flashes that he just has a completely relaxed, you know, not an, not unurgent. I mean, he's, he's a crime fighter still, but he just, he's a very Zen sense about speed, which Wally never had. He was always just, you know, Wally's always on the go and jittery and, you know. And so once we saw how well that character worked, and most importantly, how we saw how well he contrasted with Impulse, the other character that we created during that Brilliant. run. Yeah. Ball talent. That, that, that it made perfect sense to put the two of them together in the Impulse book. So making Max Mercury, young Impulse's guardian, uh, the Zen master speed and the kid who, you know, goes from thought to deed without a single moment. You know, the, the kid who is all id and, and you put all id and all super ego together in one house. I think one of the great pieces of comics artifice is the way that the shorthand you developed for, for his impulsive nature was that those kind of essentially those emojis before emojis were really a thing, you know, right. I, he I, never had thought you right. He never had thought balloons with words in them. He had thought balloons with pictures in them, <laughs> yeah. sometimes rebuses or whatever, but basically pictures, because that's again, like you said, that's one step removed from having to, think he doesn't he just goes we call you know he called i think the first story is called the single synapse theory the idea that there's just you know from brain to action there's nothing in between yeah uh, do, do you do you have any sense that uh, as as a long time flash fan it was interesting because when wally when wally became the flash mm -hmm. before you on board or on board the book you know all around um Right. crisis and whatnot i was like ah well you know i'm not sure how i feel about this and then of course with your run that completely obliterated any sense for me that barry allen was the flash and to me the flash is wally west and yeah. one of the things that i wrestle with in as uh, wrestle with as a kind of super fan is in in the media on the tv show you know he's barry allen but he's really he's really your flash he's really wally west he really he is. is he really is yeah. Yeah, they just give they give, they give him Wally's personality every time. Yeah, I know every time. Yeah, how does that feel, mate? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's again, and no no disrespect to Barry Allen, who I read growing up, but there's to me there's always been something more interesting and vital about Wally. That I mean, the thing that sets him apart is that he was the first sidekick to actually fulfill the you know fulfill yeah. the role, right? To actually yeah. graduate into not. I mean, yes. Dick Grayson became Nightwing, but he didn't become Batman except for much later on in one story. Um, but Wally didn't become a brand new superhero when he got to be of age. He just became the next Flash. And that's that made him unique. I, I think that's true. And I think there's a degree to which Wally was was always a big character waiting to happen. Because, you know, yeah. if you go back in time and, you know, you look at you look at your your, your, your uh, early 70s teen titans he's far and away the most interesting character in the yeah, book in yeah. that era and as grant morrison and i have both said many times that is the best comic that's the best superhero costume ever designed <laughs> right on oh yeah it's wonderful yeah there can be no doubt yeah there can be no doubt well and uh, uh, anybody who's approaching this for the first time is going to be able to check out in the omnibus volume one there's more to come mm -hmm which can be pre-ordered from our conversation here. And that's the Flash Omnibus, the, the um, 
Mark Waid era, and it is just glorious comics, glorious, entertaining. You know, comics are very much in the same vein of what we were talking about recently when we were on talking about Batman versus Robin. It's kind of the kind of comics you've returned to create for DC right now. Thank you. I'm having a ball. I mean, again, I cannot thank DC enough for just opening the doors. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, well, it's wonderful to have you back doing it, Mark, and it's great to have you back on the show. And uh, I, I, this is that this is an omnibus I can't wait to have on my shelf. And thanks for checking in with us and chatting to us about it. Anytime, sir. Thank you. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.